Oh, hello there. Are you ready for the story? This is the story of Sir Bostalot. Nope, sorry, wrong video. Anyway, hello. This is our financial mathematics final project, and we are Fernando Del Valle, Felix Diaz, Laura Elena Hernandez Mata, Ana Lopez Rivas, and Patricia Martinez Yanez. So, we have a problem to solve, and this is it. Suppose a salesman invests his $12,500 bonus in a fund that earns 10.8% of interest compounded monthly. Suppose also that he makes contribution of $150 at the end of each month to this fund. Find A. The value after 12 and a half years. And B. If after the 12 and a half years the fund is used to set up an annuity, how much will it pay at the end of each month for the next 10 years? Now, we could cut to a scene where one of us subs it on the whiteboard while the rest of us fall asleep. Instead, we'll sub it here in two different ways, because we're awesome. And because whiteboards are boring. Also, before we start, we need to see the formulas we we're gonna need. There. Now we can really get started. This is a little timeline with what we're doing. We have two different values. On one hand, we have the $12,500 bonus, and on the other hand, we've got the $150 contributions. What we're going to do first is bring those to the future, and since we're talking monthly periods for 12 and a half years, that means 150 periods. Let us begin with the bonus. We're looking for the future value, so that is the formula we're going to need. We already know the value of the bonus, the number of periods, and the only detail left is the interest. Since it's compounded monthly, we have to divide it by 12, as you can see. We do the math, and we have our first result. Then we have the contributions. For that, we're going to need another formula, a still for calculating the future value. Having the value of the contribution, the number of periods, and the compounded nature of interest, we make the substitution, and we have our second result. To get the total and the answer to A, all we have to do is to add them both, and you can see the result in a step four. Now we use this value as a present value to find the rent for the next 10 years. Those 10 years now translate as 120 periods since we're still working with a monthly compounded interest. So we already know the, the present value, the number of periods, and we are looking for the exact same interest. So all we have to do is to substitute in the formula again and calculate the rent. And there are. The answer for B is 13. 100.14. Now we're gonna do it the second way. Only this time we're using the present time formula and we will substitute the same values because we already know them. Only this time we're using the 150 contributions in order to know their present value. We get this result and now we add the $12,500. That's the result for A. But it's looking rather suspicious, isn't it? We're going to continue to see if we get the right result again. So for B, we need to substitute our previous result with all the other values we already know and... No, wait, that isn't right. What's wrong? Oh, okay, we got it. We're using the present value, but in order to get the answer for B, we need to bring the present value to the future. So the first three steps are actually correct, but we need to bring the result to the future 150 periods to account for the 12 and a half years of the annuity. And there, that's looking better now. Finally, we do the thing with the rent formula, substituting the recently acquired future value, and there, the same result.